Hello everyone and welcome to another Annual Reviews. I'm Jay, this is Roger and today we are bringing you a very special species, a very special bird species. We might say that it's a unique bird species and it's called the Hooded Pituhui. The scientific name Pituhui is the Corus. So this species is very interesting because it's a poisonous bird species and the way it was found is a very interesting story. So basically there was a scientist who um, wanted to study the birds in Papua New Guinea, that's where this bird lives. And he went there and he uh, put up his, net, his nets and he caught uh, several of these reddish orange birds with black head, black chest, black wings and tail, uh, just as the picture shows. And these were the hooded pituis. When he was about to release them, uh, the birds fought back because it's normal for a bird that is caught to try to release himself and it, they ended up scratching his hands and what he felt was a very intense pain uh, where it should just be a mild pain it was small wounds but it hurt like hell and one of the most curious things was that when he uh, brought his hands to his mouth you know to try you know to suck the blood and all of that he ended up getting his mouth all numb and the burning feeling. When he asked the locals about the bird, they knew the bird and they told him simply, no, that bird's not good to eat, don't eat it. Nothing else. So he was very curious about this bird that made his hands hurt, his mouth numb and the locals would eat. So he took some uh, <clears throat> feather samples and he sent them to a colleague of his in the United States that was a toxicologist. So this colleague of his had just found out about the toxins in those dark frogs in the Amazonas forest, you know, uh, which is, the, the toxin is called batracotoxins. Batraco means frogs, toxin, toxins, so it's toxins from frogs. And when he tested the feathers, he discovered that the same toxin that was present in the Amazonian frogs was present uh, in the feathers of this Papua New Guinea bird. Very curious, so this was the first registered poison sperm known to man. Okay, which is, my opinion, is very interesting by itself. So this bird, poisonous bird, lives in Papua New Guinea tropical forest and uh, in terms of conservation status, is not uh, its least concern. It, the population is stable. It spread through a wide area, and for now there doesn't seem to be any problem with it. Um, and the most interesting aspects of all these birds surround the toxins that it has. So basically, it gets its toxins from its diet. The bird eats mainly mallard uh, beetles, which is a type of beetle that contain this toxin. Uh, a curious fact is that this toxin is almost only found in plants with the exception of some atropids group. In them it's the myriad uh, beetles. So the bird eats the beetles and it storage the poison in its tissues, in its organs, skin and feathers. And uh, by storing the toxin in skin and muscle and organs, uh, it's a, a, it shows us that the bird is invulnerable to the toxins, which is a very curious thing because uh, the frogs are also invulnerable to the toxins, but the birds, it's not yet proven, but it's a very uh, good indication that they are invulnerable because if it starts the toxin in its organs, this is a very potent uh, toxin, by the way, so just a small dosage is enough to put a man to sleep and a bird also, so if it wasn't invulnerable to the toxin, by storing it, storing it in its organs, that means that it, it, would, it would die, the bird would die, but because it doesn't die, it must be invulnerable to the toxin. And the toxin gets to the outside of its body, and that's, there are two, three on how it does, okay? The first one says that he, the bird uses the urethral gland. Okay, so you might be asking, hey, Jay and Roger, what's the urethral gland? Well, the urethral gland is a gland present in every bird body. Um, for your information, feathers on birds need to be impermeable. Why? Because if the bird gets wet, 
that's a very good way to get a bacterial or fungi uh, infection, yeast infection, whatever. And so the feather must be impermeable to water and also because it decreases the um, uh, uh, temperature regulation, okay? Because it doesn't allow the bird to lose uh, heat. And everybody has this gland that produces this uh, impermeable substance and they uh, spread the, the substance with their beaks through the feathers. And one theory says that these toxins is storage in this gland and is spread with the impermeable uh, substance through the feathers, making the bird uh, poisonous. Now, another theory, a more recent theory, says that that's not how it works. They say they didn't find evidence of the toxin being storage in the uh, europegial gland. Uh, by the way, it's called europegial because europegial uh, because it's it's on top of the tail, right uh, around the cloaca. And another word, I'm not mistaken, it might be mistaken, but another word for the cloaca is a europegial and europegial gland because it's on top of that. Okay. Moving forward, uh, this study said that they didn't find evidence that the toxin was storage in the European gland and their theory is that the, the toxin is storage in the skin of the bird and as the skin sheds, because every animal on, on this planet that has skin, it ends up shedding it slowly, right? We lose parts of our skin, that's why we shower, because you have to uh, take the dead skin out uh, to prevent infection and dirt and all that and as the skin sheds on the bird um, it ends up spreading the toxin through the feathers and making the bird poison so there's not a consensus in the scientific community personally I think even though the toxin certainly is storage in the skin I think what makes more sense is that it's spread through the European gland uh, it's more practical and evolution there's a, a rule of evolution that it's called the parsimony rule or the or Orkham uh, blade rule that says that the easiest way is most likely the most uh, the right way which means that when we are looking at evolution the way that has less steps to get to the solution is probably the right uh, way so I think it's um, more complicated for the bird to evolve this shedding and, and storaging thing than just to use a previously, previously uh, existent gland to storage the toxin. That's my opinion. I don't have proof of it. This is just my personal opinion. Uh, I might be proven wrong in the future. Let's see how it goes. But this is something uh, uh, interesting. Another thing that is very interesting is that most poisonous animals, um, like frogs, insects, uh, I don't know, reptiles, most poisonous animals are, and even plants are poisonous to deter predators from eating them. Okay, but in birds that doesn't make many uh, a lot of sense because birds fly. So if they fly, they can get away pretty quickly from uh, predators. Uh, what was discovered is even though this uh, poison on this bird also helps them uh, deter predators like snakes, hawks, and even humans because humans on the Papua New Guinea islands do not eat this bird because they know it's toxic. The main reason that this bird is toxic is because of parasites. So apparently this toxin, this batracotoxin, uh, prevents parasites from attacking you, from latching onto you and even prevents bacterial infection. And the uh, bacterial infection is also something that uh, is present on the frogs. So the frogs, uh, the Amazonian frogs that have this toxin, have that habit uh, to prevent predators from eating them. But it was also discovered that this toxin helps the frogs uh, not getting bacterial infections. And it's the same thing with the bird, it's very interesting and I think it's very practical. For example, we are humans, right? And we have to take anti-parasite medicine and we have to get all those insect repellents and this bird does as the toxin that it gets from eating beetles. So it feeds, it gets the toxin, and now it doesn't have to worry about parasites anymore. And parasites are a nuisance of the animal world. And even though uh, the most efficient parasite doesn't kill its hostage, it ends up always affecting his, um, well, affecting the hostage, the, the hostage, you know? 
uh, by making it thinner, maybe weaker, maybe more prone to disease because the uh, parasites ended up feeding on you, on your resources. And that's why these birds can live on on a tropical forest full of parasites, full of disease, without having to worry about it, which is great. Uh, so, before I finish, I would also like to show you uh, the clip of the sound, so Pitrui, yeah, that's how this bird is called, the Pitrui. Pitrui is a, a sound, it's not a name, it's not a word, it's a sound, because it's very associated with the sound that these birds make, okay? And I'm going to show you a clip right now. So we just heard a hooded pituitary, very interesting, very whistle-like, and well, uh, now that we have everything, we have this orange and black bird that's poisonous to prevent parasites in a tropical environment with a beautiful sound, me and Roger have come up with a review. So we thought that even though there are a lot of things that are still unknown from this species, because it's difficult to study. I think just because of the fact that it was the first poisonous bird species to be identified and all of those characteristics surrounding it, I, we believe that this species from its uniqueness, from its uh, atypical ecology regarding the poisonous, we think it's a very interesting species to study. It has a very good potential uh, future studies, oh, that means that if you are interested in finding a, a PhD, a PhD uh, thesis, this bird might be very interesting to study its ecology and life traits, and so we give it an 8.0 from 10. This is our view, uh, hooded pituis, pituis decorus, 8.0 out of 10. So that's it for today, thank you all for joining in, I hope you enjoyed uh, I, I really enjoy uh, searching about this bird and learning from it. I hope you do. Don't forget to leave a comment suggesting a future animal for an animal review. And also, if you like uh, gaming or you just want to have a conversation about conservation problems on biology, I stream every Monday and Friday. My, my, my Twitch account is down below. Make sure to check it out. Maybe ask some questions or just enjoy some gaming, chill, uh, and see you next time guys, bye!